All uh, femtosecond lasers work on a principle of photo disruption, but the Zima system using nanojoule pulse energy works as the driver to the mechanism of actually causing the separation of corneal tissue, the photo disruptive effect, as opposed to using a photo cavitation effect that a lot of high energy femtosecond lasers use. And this is the big difference between the lasers. So when we basically think about this in uh, terms that most people can understand, it's like going into a very hot bath for basically 10 minutes, as opposed to a very lukewarm bath or a cold bath for maybe for an hour, which most people can tolerate that lower temperature rather than the hot temperature that we see with a higher femtosecond lasers. Oh, we've had some preliminary uh, experience using the lenticular extraction with the Zima laser. Um, I think it offers a few advantages over other laser systems. The, one of the nice things is that you can actually move the lenticule and help you with centration after the docking has basically occurred, which is a big advantage because we know that during lenticular extraction it is important to get the accuracy of the lenticule uh, in the right position on the visual axis. The docking with the, with the Zima system is, is in the same handpiece that we basically use for LASIK, so it's a flat apronating uh, system. Uh, there's a lot of uh, software manipulation that can be done with the Zima system, so we can make different tunnels, you can use two tunnels, you can use one tunnel, um, and you can make the tunnels at any size you want. This may be important in the future when we're thinking about doing toric and astigmatic corrections where we can also have a tunnel lens. The advantage of also being able to make two tunnels is that for less experienced surgeons who are new to lenticular extraction, it will help them remove the lenticule from the eye itself. So this can all be tweaked during basically the software when people are undergoing the surgical procedure itself. For more experienced surgeons, they may find it easier to just use one incision, uh, which is what I currently basically use, and also it allows you to adjust the incision size so you can reduce the amount of surgically induced astigmatism and we can basically improve the biomechanical effects on the cornea by making our vertical incision much smaller.